Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane, and in today's video, we're going to be doing something that I'm quite excited about. We're going to be going and doing some 3D scanning using just a mobile phone and a clever little app, which I will tell you a little bit about in just a sec. A little while ago, a company called Ubiquity6 reached out to me and asked me about making a video on their service called Displayland or Display.land. And what that is, is an app and you point your camera phone at the thing that you want to scan. I'll show you some examples in a little bit. And then that turns them into 3D models without you having to do really anything. There are a few like best practices that you need to follow to get decent scans. But other than that, it kind of just works. So to put it through its paces, I thought we'd find some stuff that we can scan, take the assets and try and turn that into a level in Unreal Engine, or at least a beautiful, pretty scene in Unreal Engine. So in order to do that, we're gonna to have to find some stuff, capture it, then we're gonna to have to then send it to their service, download the models, optimize them, get textures going, set it all up in Unreal Engine 4, and see how well that goes. So the first thing we'll need to do before we can jump into that is to get the app installed. So we'll take a look at how you do that now. So installing the app is nice and straightforward. The first thing you'll need to do is go into your app store of choice. So I'm using the Google Play Store. And then using the search function at the top, I'm going to search for display.land. And you can see that's already popping up in the suggestions there. So then I will select that from the search. And there's the app listed at the top. So I'll give that a press and choose to install it. The app itself is just over 30 megabytes, so it doesn't take long to download and install. Now it's installed, I will just tap the open button to get the app to open up. And then it gives you this nice little welcome sequence which shows you how the app works, gives you some information on privacy, tells you how you can add some things to the captures that you get, and also that there's a social community attached to the app, meaning that when you look at other people's things, you can leave comments, you can like them, all that kind of stuff. So the first thing you'll want to do is sign up. You can do that with an email address or phone number. I decided to go with my phone number to sign up, but email address works just fine. So you'll need to choose which country you're in. So that's a little bit strange. It's down the bottom of the screen. So I'm choosing UK and then I just need to confirm that. That will change the dialing code and then I'll just put in my phone number, which I'm obviously going to blur out. I don't want you guys sending me nudes. Then it will send me a text message with a code to verify that. So I'll put the code in and then I can log in. And that's it, the app's installed. You can see that every time you open the app, it gives you uh, another person's work to look at. So some scans that have been shared. Then you can go into your own account. You can see that I've done my little practice scan there, uh, just a sign that I walked past. And then we're ready to take this out into the world and do some scanning. Now that we've got the app installed, we can take it out somewhere and get some scanning done. So I thought we'd do a very sort of nature filled scene. So we need to go and find some nature somewhere. Let's do that and see what we can find. And here we are in the great outdoors. So this is where I'm reliably informed they keep all the nature. So I'm going to go around in a minute, have a little scan with my phone and see if we can get some good stuff to build out our level with. So I'm going to be looking at maybe getting some ground textures, having a look to even get some logs, some tree stumps. I've seen quite a nice bench as well. So I'm going to go around and get a few different bits and bobs using this Displayland app. And then we'll take it back when we're done into Unreal Engine and see how it looks. Right, so let's have a little scan. I need my phone. So here I am capturing a section of this muddy path and if we have a look inside the app all you really need to do is press the begin button to get started and then you just point your camera and walk around and that's all there is to it. You can after a while if you turn the option on start to see the point cloud building up. So here's what that looks like overlaid on the image and you can also show just the point cloud only just like this. So you can do all that and then when you're finished all you need to do then is press stop to stop capturing and then you can choose to give the capture a name so for this one i'm just going to call it muddy path 
and then we have to move on to the next one. You can also say exactly where it is. I'm going to leave that. I'll just skip that for now. So I choose upload later so I can upload them when I'm back at my Wi-Fi. And then I can go on to capture something else. As I've been walking through, I've just seen this wicked bit of mossy ground over here behind me. I'm going to see if that captures well. I don't know if it will because there's lots of bits going up and down, but let's give it a go. So now I'm just wandering kind of aimlessly through the woods, uh, just becoming one with nature really. And I found this wicked stump, which is just, where is it? Just there. I'm gonna have a go at that one next. So let's see how that one turns out. Okay, so I think I'm done now. I've been kind of all around the forest today. Um, unfortunately, most of the stuff that I've videoed myself getting is in this glorious sunshine, which will mean it's unusable, unfortunately, because you need it to be really cloudy and overcast for the best results. Uh, but it has been cloudy for about half the time I've been out here, so I'll use all of those captures because they're gonna give me the results that I want. So I've managed to get um, some decent ground things. I've got myself uh, some logs, twigs, uh, what else did I find? A really good stump. Got myself some rocks as well. Some rocks in a kids play area of all places. That can't be safe. Right, so I'm gonna pack up all my crap, get back into my little studio, and we'll see how these turned out. See you there. And we're back indoors. So, now that we're here, what I need to do with all these captures that I've got is get them uploaded to display.land's servers. So what they can do is do all the necessary processing and when that's finished, I will get notified and at that stage, I'll be able to take a look at them and get them downloaded to do more exciting things with in Unreal Engine. So the first thing we need to do is get them uploaded. So we'll go back over to the phone and I'll show you how to do that now. So uploading is nice and straightforward. All we need to do is open the app and then I need to go into the My Profile section, which is that little icon in the bottom left. And here are all my pending uploads because I didn't upload them at the time. So I'm going to do Muddy Path click on upload and then choose upload now. Then there's this little process where it zips it up and then it uploads it. And after that, it moves on to processing. And for this part, you can actually just close the app down. You don't need it open anymore. It'll happen in the background and you get a notification on your phone when it's complete, ready to look at and download. I then repeated that process for the remaining captures that I had, got them all uploaded and then let them all process in the background. The first one started telling me they were ready after about 20 minutes. Uh, the rest took up to about an hour, I think. And the longest I've had anything take using the app is about two to two and a half hours to process, uh, which is not bad going. I've done some capture locally using a computer and it took a hell of a lot longer than that. So that's not a bad result at all. With them all processed, then what I can do now is go into the app and then I want to choose one of these ones to view. So I think we'll start with one of the more interesting looking ones. We'll do this bench one here. So you can choose to publish it, which I'm not going to do. I'll just open it up and we'll go into edit. So there's the bench and I could, if I wanted to, choose to crop that. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do this in Maya a little bit later. But it is one of the features of the app that if you choose to, you can crop these in so i think you have to touch on one of the sides and then you can push it in and after a while you just kind of crop out all the stuff that you don't want so I push all that in there i don't need any of that and you can see as i do it it's just bringing me in closer so this would for the purposes of like showing it off to other people through the app this is quite an important step otherwise they can't see the thing that you actually tried to capture so there we go for the purposes of sharing that would have been a pretty nicely cropped bench. So we can just put a tick on that. Uh, I'll allow it to update. And it's also within this section that you can add some of the other little models in there for the kind of augmented reality thing. But again, for me, that's not something that I'm too concerned with. So we'll leave that one alone for now. So we'll take a look at one of the ones that I do want to download. I want to start with a path. So the main one that I took the time on was this one here called Main Path. So in order to get to that, the first thing I'm gonna need to do is publish it. So make sure I click on publish. 
And now I've done that, I can choose how to share it. And one of the options is to download the mesh, which is the one I'm going to choose. So I'll press that button there. I want the OBJ 3D mesh, so I'll go to send link. And then I'm going to choose to email that to myself via Gmail. So I'll send it from me to me. That's pretty good. And I'm going to call it main path. So let's zush that over. I'm done on that. And then we'll go over to the computer next to see how that came through. So here we are over on the PC and this is the email that I've just sent myself. There's the link. So I'll give it a click and a download will begin. It's just a zip folder. So we'll let that get downloaded and then we will extract what we have inside. So I'm just creating a folder called main path. This is where I'm going to start. Here are the three files that are downloaded. So there's an OBJ, a texture file and also an MTL file. And I'm just going to name those to something that I can work with. So make sure we've got the diffuse and the OBJ ready. And now in Maya, we're going to import the OBJ and have a look at how that came through. So this is the path. Looks a little bit messy at the moment, but I'm going to tidy that up. But the first thing I need to do is make it so that I can see the texture and also just stop it from being too shiny. So we'll turn it into a Lambert. So that has now put the texture on and you can see it starts to make a little bit more sense at this stage. So what I need to do now is just kind of position it so that I can work with it a little bit better. Zooming in, you can see that it has captured a lot of detail and we've got a pretty nice texture to work with as well. So at this stage, I'm just going to delete all the faces that I don't need. I only want the path. I don't want all the nonsense around the outside. Get rid of all this stuff above as well. I don't need that. And there we go. That's pretty much the path that I want to work with. And now I'm going to create a low poly version of this. So I'll just snap a really basic plane into about the right place for what I want. There we go. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to position it just below so that when I transfer maps, I can say anything that's in front of that shape is what I want to be captured within the diffuse map. So I'm using transfer maps in Maya for that. So if I just turn on the envelope and make sure that that little red box is as close to the terrain as possible without intersecting it at all. I'm going to use a diffuse and a normal map. I'm going to create both of those. I'm going to use PNGs and make sure that I've given them appropriate names. Make sure that I've got a nice resolution for them. There we go. We'll go for 2K. And then I can click on Bake and Close. And this will take a little while. And when it's done, I can have a look at my plane that I created, my low poly version of this path, and see how it came out. So at first it looks black. That's just a normal map doing that. Maya doesn't display them very well. When I get a better angle, you can see that it has transferred the detail from the color and also the normal onto that. So I decided that I'd straighten it out at this stage so that it will tile when I put it into Unreal Engine. So I got it all kind of flat and made it a sort of uniform size. Got my pivot in place and centered it. Pretty standard for getting it into Unreal Engine. I put a few subdivisions as well just to add a little bit of height variation. I didn't want it to be too flat. And at that stage, it was ready to export. So I just turned it into an FBX, made sure that I knew where the texture files were saved and then I could click on export and it would be ready to take into Unreal Engine. So I created a new project in Unreal Engine. I called it Nature because it's very nature themed this, isn't it? And as soon as it was created, I made a new level, deleted some of the crap out of it and imported my FBX of the path. I didn't really do much in terms of changing the settings. I just imported it, created a really basic material, didn't do much to it. There you can see my two textures are attached. I just added a constant for the roughness and then assigned that to it. So there we can see that I've imported it. I just decided to center it in the world so that I knew where it was. And then I created a copy of it. I mirrored it and then I attached it so that it would make it twice as long. And then I just got a perspective view to see if it looked long enough to my eye, which it did. So I was happy with that. So at this stage, I went back into Maya 
happy with the workflow and created all the other low polys. So you can see I got the bank, I got this weird log thing, also got this pile of logs, which I am quite happy with. I wish I'd gone a little higher poly with it, uh, but it did turn out really well. Here are the uh, first rocks that I got. And then I did the stump as well. The stump, I think, turned out better than anything else. And then back into Unreal Engine, I started putting it all together. So I created a rocky bank, threw in a landscape, put it around the little area that I'd created. And then I used the foliage tool to put in the logs and the rocks and the tree stumps that I'd created. So at this stage, everything was from the scan. Then I went to Mega Scans. I got some grass and some ferns just to kind of bulk it out and make it look a little bit more believable. So we threw those in there. And then I threw some trees at it as well. Played with the fog and the post-processing a little bit, built the lighting, and then when that came out, this is the result. Played a little bit more with post-processing, and this is what we got when I'm finished. So I think that turned out pretty well. And that brings us to the end of my little scanning adventure. So I wanted to know, could I use this display.land service to scan some assets as the base of like a level in Unreal Engine? And as you can see from the beautiful little environment that I put together behind me, yes, you can. I did get a little bit of help from uh, places like Megascans. But that being said, I think uh, some of the assets, especially the, the little stump, I think they hold up alongside the more professional assets, such as the Megascans ones. So I think we can call this a success and something I'm very happy with. I definitely will be keeping the app on my phone and I'll be using it to scan things that are interesting to me as I'm going about my everyday life. If you want to follow me on display.land, I'll put my details on screen. It'll be nice to uh, see what you're scanning as well if you do that. If 3D scanning is something that you're interested in, I will put a link at the end of the video to a course on Plural site based all around that, a more professional workflow, a bit more in depth than I've gone into in this video. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for sticking it out to the end. I hope it was informative and maybe even entertaining, who knows? If you did think it was good, then do the thumbs up thing. If you didn't think it was good, you can do the other thing. If you're not subscribed, then you should be. This is Game Dev Academy, and what we do is we look at lots of different topics relating to the making of games. So lots of art related things, some um, scripting things. We've got Unreal Engine tutorials, Maya tutorials. It's just an all around good time. So if that sounds good, hit the subscribe button, do the bell as well, and hopefully I'll see you in future videos. If you want to learn more about 3D scanning and photogrammetry, then I recommend taking this course on Pluralsight. Photogrammetry in Memento and ZBrush by Justin Marshall is a really good place to start with this way of creating 3D models using just photographs. If you do want to check this course out, then check out the link in the description below to get a 10 day free trial to Pluralsight.